just want to say uh, welcome to everyone that's uh, been able to join us today. Um, and thank everyone, yourselves included, for uh, completing the assessment. We had a, a really amazing turnout of individuals uh, who chose to complete the assessment and hopefully learned uh, a great deal of information about themselves. Um, if you are here with us and have the report in hand, perfect. We're going to go through it, uh, help you guys try to interpret that uh, a little bit better. Um, as we move through, we ask if you can just keep yourselves on mute. Uh, videos off as well that way anyone with any bandwidth issues with internet is going to be uh, best position to hear us out um, as well if you have any questions we have allowed the chat to stay open uh, between you and your host so feel free as as you have any questions that come up during the presentation to send your questions in the chat and what we're going to do is we'll capture the most important insights or takeaways from this presentation and share those with you in a, in a bit of a one page document afterwards. So we won't get those to those today, uh, but we will address them for you soon. Um, Carolyn and I have put together a, a presentation um, where we're going to uh, take 45 minutes or so, 45 minutes to an hour, uh, and first provide a bit of a high level overview of what Success Finder is. Um, we won't go into all the detail because we could be here for a long time if we did that. Uh, we'll just look quickly at what we need to know about Success Finder to really understand um, what it is that's in that Career Explore report, where that information comes from. And then most importantly, for you guys to understand um, how you can take those findings from the Career Explore report and how you can apply those to your own life uh, in your early career. Uh, we suspect some of you are in university. We suspect that uh, some of you are already in your early career. We'll kind of try to speak to both of those um, client groups, individual groups as we go through the presentation. So we're, uh, we're cognizant of that and we look forward to sharing lots with you today. Uh, before we jump into it, a brief introduction to both of us. Uh, my name's Andrew Watson. I'll be presenting a, a big chunk of this presentation uh, and Carolyn presenting uh, the other half of it. Um, a bit of background on myself, I spent five years in marketing consulting uh, in Toronto after uh, doing an undergraduate degree in business. After about five years or so uh, with a phenomenal company where I was learning lots, I decided to go back to school and get my master's of science uh, in innovation and entrepreneurship. Uh, what was really cool about the program is I had a chance to write a thesis uh, where I looked at young people and how they experienced the transition from school into work and into their early careers, from student to professionals. Uh, that's allowed me to shift my career path, really, uh, away from marketing consulting. Now I work for Success Finder in the behavioral sciences world, um, technology world, personality science world. Uh, I also am working as a part-time professor at the university I attended uh, in France for my master's. And as well, I've spent the last year working with uh, young people in university, helping them define their um, kind of early career uh, strategy. Carolyn? Great. So um, I'm Carolyn Huss. I'm the Vice President of Product and R&D at SuccessFinder. I've been working uh, with SuccessFinder for six years. Uh, I have both a master's and PhD in industrial organizational psychology. So I've been uh, fascinated for many years about people and why they do what they do and personality and how you can really leverage who you are uh, in terms of how you how you apply that in, in, in your work. Um, I'm also uh, have a background in consulting as well. So I worked with different organizations uh, everywhere from uh, individuals to managers to uh, leaders and uh, uh, CEOs to, to better understand themselves and see how they can develop themselves, how they can understand people better as well. Uh, and uh, workshops like this and uh, conference talks are things that I'm uh, also very passionate about. So uh, I've been giving lots of talks on things like the future of work, how the world of work is shifting, uh, a lot about designing careers and what a careers look like in today's world, how are they changing? Um, and most importantly, and I think a big theme for today is uh, self-awareness for your own professional development. How can you learn more about yourself to, to do something with that that can really help you uh, get where you wanna go? Perfect. 
So without further ado, we will jump uh, right into part one of our, our three parts uh, here this afternoon. And that's a, a bit of a high level introduction to what Success Finder is um, and hopefully give you some context into the assessment that you did. Um, so we are a, a personality assessment um, tool. Uh, the way that you have already had the, the pleasure of interacting with us is, is through our assessment, where we threw 340 forced choice questions at you. I suspect uh, that it wasn't easy to choose in all of those areas. Um, but important background for you is that those questions are all created very purposefully um, in a way that uh, ensures that we get a really scientifically accurate uh, description of your profile. Um, and to ensure that that, that profile uh, gives us a, a set of data that allows us to deliver some really meaningful insights and useful insights to you. One of those is the Career Explorer report um, that we hope has delivered a, a ton of value for you. Um, the science of what we do, those questions allow us to get insights into your profile in two major ways. The first is is, is a profile of your behavioral preferences. So understanding how you like to go through life, how you like to go through uh, your professional life and present yourself in a professional environment. Uh, what are the behaviors that you have a natural preference to exhibit in a workplace type environment? To give you some context, we, we break down behavior into 85 components. And that is as detailed as you're going to find in the marketplace, which is really wonderful. So you know that that career explore tool or report that you're looking at is built on some really, really precise science that looks, in your looks at your behavior in a variety of different dimensions, whether it's how you work with people, how you solve problems, uh, other categories such as that. Now, an important note on behavior, uh, important piece of perspective is that we at Success Finder try to measure your behavioral DNA, really your natural, natural preferences towards behavior. And we respect the fact that that's not always how you're gonna act or behave. Everyone can alter their behavior based on the environment at hand, based on projects that they're trying to accomplish. We can use for an example, one of the traits that we measure is assertion. Are you an assertive person? In a group setting, will you make your voice be heard? You may not be an assertive person naturally, but let's say you're negotiating for a house uh, and you want to ensure that what you're, um, what you're gonna secure is something that fits within a budget of yours. While you may not be an assertive individual, you may ensure that your voice uh, is loudly heard so that you get what it is that you're looking for. Um, so what we measure is, are you naturally predisposed um, to demonstrating or have a preference toward being assertive or not? And we do that across all the behaviors that we measure for. Um, it's a second important perspective is that we measure your preference towards behavior, not your ability to perform them. Um, so in the, in the house example, if you're not an assertive individual, it doesn't mean that you can't be. It just means that you naturally don't do that. Um, the lower your natural preference for a behavior, the higher effort there is to actually demonstrate that, right? If it's not your natural preference, you can do it, but it may take more for you to do. It may take more effort. It may come with a little bit of frustration, a little bit of harder work required. The reciprocal of that is true as well. If you have a really high preference towards a certain behavior, it may come really naturally. It may just be how you present yourself in a variety of different work-related scenarios. And Carolyn's gonna revisit these two images uh, in detail uh, in a few moments as well. So behavioral preferences is the first thing we measure. The second thing that we measure is your career interests, right? So as you guys know from those 340 questions, we don't explicitly ask or simply ask just what are your interests we actually look at it in greater complexity than that we have done our research in the background on a variety of different uh, career areas 35 different career themes to be specific and we know what kind of behaviors uh, are required for success and satisfaction in those areas. We also, through our uh, questions that we presented to you in the assessment, we look to understand whether you are interested in 
preferential toward performing the activities and the responsibilities required by each of those 35 different career themes. And which is unique within our assessment, whether you're willing to accept the harsh realities of, of those different career themes as well. You can think of a harsh reality as uh, the long hours that's required of somebody that gets into investment banking or the willingness of someone to get into argumentative discussion if they wanna be a lawyer. You might like all the great things about those professions, but are you also willing to endure those more difficult parts of the job that aren't always comfortable for everybody? And so taking together the behavioral preferences as well as your career themes, our tool through the science that supports what we do can help us predict your likelihood of success and satisfaction across a variety of different career roles and industries. And those are the career roles and industries that roll up into that Career Explore report that Carolyn's going to take you through. Now, one thing before I hand over for the Career Explore is just to uh, remember as we go through this that there's no good or bad profiles. Um, there's just different starting points for everybody. Everybody answered the same set of questions. And if you didn't choose one thing, it was because you chose something else. And, and as you can imagine, all people are so complex that people have different behavioral preferences and different career interests in different areas. And that's okay. The idea is that we understand ourselves first and from there, we'll look at how we can take that information and apply it in the world of early career development. With that, I'll hand it over to Carolyn for the Career Explore report. Thanks, Andrew. Um, this is really a, a, a great part to, uh, to really reflect on what, uh, what Andrew just mentioned, is that as you look in your report, uh, before I even get started, most of us have a tendency to look at this as a report card. So similar to grades in school, you finish the test and you say, how did I do? Am I good or am I not good? And that's natural. A lot of people have that tendency, but it's really important to understand that this is not an evaluation of who you are. This is meant to really just give you a portrait of what came through as more natural, less natural for you so that you can take that information into account to understand what will take more effort for me and what will come more naturally to me. So again, that's really just to help you navigate these decisions and prepare you for the road ahead rather than to close off roads and avenues to you. So all of these avenues are still possible, but the more you know about what's it gonna be like for me, where will I have to put more effort, that can sometimes help you filter out decisions that might not be as fun for you in the long term, might not feel very satisfying, or might be exactly what you wanted and they fit really well with your profile. So all of these, these are possible, and it's nice to check in with yourself and say, okay, am I really aware about what it's gonna, what it's gonna be like? So I'm going to walk you through the, the four main sections of the report at a pretty high level because there are really two types of information that we capture. First, you probably saw this. This is really like the summary of, uh, of your profile. It gives you the top five of your profile that came through. So obviously it's not everything that's in there, but it does speak to the four categories that we want to share information with you on. The first is your lifestyle priorities. This is something that's so important as you start off your career, but throughout your career, it can shift a little bit as what is most important to you in your life right now. This is one of the first satisfaction factors related to what kind of career are you going to enjoy and what place does career have in your life right now? What's meaningful to you? Because that can help you determine what kind of environment is right for you. A very rigid environment with long hours, some people love that. Uh, a more startup environment where you know the hours are a bit more flexible um, or something that's a bit more of a gig economy. You wanna do contract work, you wanna be an autonomous worker, you wanna have a lot of freedom for your schedule. So these are the kinds of things that are really interesting to check in with yourself. So you'll see that what came up here in your top five and also in the later pages, that's not reflecting uh, how your life actually is. It's talking about how you'd like it to be. I like to sometimes position it as if you had one extra day in your week, where would you want to spend that time? And this can help you understand these are the places where I'd ideally like to spend the most time. And some of them can be very interesting mixes of what might be relevant for your work. 
For example, if learning is really high for you, but career is not that high for you, doesn't mean you're not gonna need a job like all of us. It means that your job environment has to provide you with a way to satisfy your natural curiosity. If relaxation and social is very important for you, health is very important for you, it means that maybe spending too many, too many long hours at work, day after day, constantly, is gonna start to weigh in on the time you wanna spend on other things that are important, like sports activities that you like to do, for example, or relaxation activities that help you manage your stress and anxiety. You don't want to uh, take over too much of that time because it is important for you. Now, we don't always get what we want, but this is the portrait of what you'd ideally like to have. So the question for you is not, how do I get everything I want? It's to recognize that there may be times in your life where you're not getting everything you'd want. And the question is, how long am I willing to be in that state where I don't really feel like I'm in harmony with what's most important to me? You have to just check in and say, okay, I'm willing to work long hours for the first year at this company. I know it's gonna be tough, but I know that after that, the schedule gets a little bit more flexible and easy. As long as it's temporary and you're aware that you can't do that forever, you're not a natural workaholic, loves to spend all your time at work. This is a way for you to kind of know that, okay, it's going to be difficult. It's going to weigh on my satisfaction, but in the long run, it will lead to something better. Or to say, I don't think I'm going to take this job or this career because I don't think I'm going to get some of these things. And that's really important to me. And it makes it, it's very essential to my satisfaction. Top right, you'll see your top vocational incentives. So this is taking you out of just the sphere of your life satisfaction, and it's really what kind of a work environment? What do I need from my work that will make me satisfied? So this is more, will I enjoy the kind of culture, the kind of company? Will I enjoy the kind of roles and opportunities that are there? So again, this has nothing to do with your ability, but it's really to say that when I wanna work in a place, I feel very satisfied when it provides me with these incentives. These are incentives that really uh, make you feel good about where you work. And we actually say they're even your must-haves. They're your kind of non-negotiable checklist. If this job checks all of these boxes for you, you're gonna be satisfied in the long run. Um, and that's really interesting here. Anything that came up high for you is going to be something that I encourage you when you're looking for a job to interview the company about that. You know, when, when you're at an interview and they say, do you have any questions for us? These are the places you might want to ask them a few questions. You know, uh, if uh, complexity is something that is really important to you, you can ask, you know, what kind of complex challenging assignments am I likely to see in this kind of a work environment? Uh, if fraternity and service are important to you, you'll want to know that you'll be working with people and you'll have the chance to help them. Uh, you'll have a chance to be in a role where you're of service to them. If leadership and power are important to you, that means that somewhere down the line, you want to be kind of in charge, impacting and influencing the work of others. You want to have that kind of a position, maybe not today, but down the line, you'd like to know it's possible because those are your must haves. They, they should be there. And if you can't get them, often that's when you'll leave a job or leave a company when some of these elements aren't present. Regardless of how much you like, you know, your, your teammates, you like your boss, if some of these things aren't there long term, you won't feel like it's giving you what you need. It's important to look at it with that perspective. In terms of your clear strengths, so here you just have your top five natural competencies, uh, but there's also the ability in the Career Explorer to look at all of them. So the highs, the ones that are less natural as well. And this is meant to give you kind of a portrait of what came through in your, in your profile in terms of your favorite ways of behaving at work. So you'll see these are grouped into categories like how you solve problems, uh, how you uh, like to get your work done, uh, what's your approach to relationships, what motivates you at work, and even what are your self-management personal success kind of factors. And the way to look at this, again, is not as a report card. What did I get high and what did I get low? What am I good at? What am I not good at? Do not read the results that way. The idea here is to say, okay, what are my natural strengths? What came up as really natural for me? Those are the ones that are the easiest for you to demonstrate and that ideally fit with the kind of work you're looking to do. If building consensus is really uh, high for you, that means that you want to work in teams where there's good harmony, uh, there's good vibes, uh, where you're able to really work collectively and align interests. 
Uh, if sustaining profitability is really important to you, that means that that's something you can bring is this eye for the cost benefits of different things in your, in, in your work environment. You can maximize value, financial value for others and for yourself. So I'm saying this already to start to think about the language you can use to understand what sets me apart. What's my contribution? Another question you're likely to get if you're searching for a job or even putting together a CV, you want to write those few lines about, you know, what skills do I bring? Some of this is really interesting for you to think about, okay, how does this come together? How have I used this in the past? How have I seen this contribute to a school assignment or to even a part-time job or even a sports team you might be on? All of these informal ways you may have leveraged some of these strengths. Don't focus too much on the lower scores and things that uh, don't seem as natural for you. Like Andrew said, doesn't mean you can't do them. It just means that given the option, you're probably gonna do your favorite ones instead. The last section is really uh, top matches. And I'm gonna talk more about that in a bit, but this is really where you get the top five matches of where you look very similar to people who do these roles in terms of your personality. So regardless of whether you went to school for this kind of a job, uh, whether you've ever done it before or not, there's something about your personality, your style on things like the competencies, the priorities, the vocational incentives, and the career interests that seem to really resemble people in these roles. And that's where we're going to give you uh, a fit with your personality. But I'll talk more about that in a second. Andrew, you want to go to the next slide? Yeah. So I already covered a lot of this, but the highlights gives you the top five, but then you can go deeper and you can click on any one of the things that you see here. So the report, obviously not clickable, but there's an interactive exploration where you can click on any of these and find out more about what it means. What are some coaching tips? If ever it's something that's a bit of a lower preference, what can I do about that? But I'd say I would encourage you to look at the highs first. I know that's not a reflex we all have, but take a look at that and say, huh, interesting. What does this tell me about myself? What does this mean in terms of what I value most and what I might be looking for? And when you do actually look at the lows, you have to look at it in terms of knowing what I know about what's natural for me. These things are slightly less natural. And do I think I'm going to encounter that in my jobs? Do I think that that's going to be important or not? Should I do something about that? Or is it not really relevant given the kind of work I'm going to do? Um, so those are things to keep in mind, you know, be very fair with yourself. There's literally no way to score high on everything on success finder. It is forced choice. You choose one thing, you don't choose another. Everyone has highs, averages, and lows. On the next slide, we're going to talk a little bit uh, about how to read these results. So I mentioned it already. It's based on preference. Um, Andrew alluded to this same diagram, but it is really important. The higher you score, it's not how good you are at something, how much you've done it in the past. It means that when you were answering the questionnaire, these were things that you kept saying, yeah, that's me. Yeah, that's me. Or that's definitely not me. So I'm going to choose this one here. Then more you chose something, you endorsed a behavior, the more natural it is for you probably to do it. It's your favorite. It's your go-to. You probably do them very often because they, they're, they're the way you're already acting. When you have something that's a low preference, it's really more the fact that you didn't choose these behaviors when given another option. So if you think about that in life, it means that if I give you the choice to look at an Excel spreadsheet and understand all the numbers, and naturally you're really not the type to uh, do well with that kind of information, you can do it, but it'll probably take you a little longer. You'll probably have to sit there and say, okay, what am I looking at here? And there's a chance that it'll kind of drain you of energy because it's so unnatural when you should be spending most of your time doing your favorite things. So we're trying to give you that awareness to say, if that's really something you want to do, you have to be very mindful of the fact that it will drain you a little more, will take that effort. So reading your results is all about understanding what's going to feel more natural versus what will feel less natural, not in terms of how good you'll be at doing it. When we look more towards the matches, this is kind of the, the meat of the career explore because the idea is let's channel everything that you've learned about yourself into a specific career direction or certain options. Similarly to the preferences, you can't match with every job that's out there. That would be crazy. If you were a perfect match for every kind of role that's out there, I'd be very surprised just from a statistician perspective. That is a Probability wise, that's very rare. It's very unlikely that every job is going to be a perfect match for you. 
That means that you're likely to see a few matches that come up where you are so similar to people who do these jobs already, not in terms of what you know and what you've studied, but you think the same way they do. You solve problems the same way they do. Uh, your approach to people is very similar to them. And this isn't just people who do these jobs. It's people who, through our research, they're very, very successful and satisfied. We study them to find out why are they so good, so happy at these jobs? And then we see your profile, does it look like their profile? So this section of the Career Explorer is meant to give you the chance to explore 80 job areas where you can see, do I look like people who do these jobs and who love it, or do I not resemble them at all? And we give you some descriptions of what is this job area? What are some roles in this job area? We even say, what are some of the key competencies that those people who, who do really well seem to have? And it's meant to help you kind of learn about these roles too. You'll see there's definitions. Maybe you didn't know what labor relations was about. Maybe you didn't know what uh, health and safety was about in the HR profession. Uh, and this can give you also just like a bank of knowledge. Uh, I often find that we have a very narrow perspective on the kinds of jobs we can do. And if you're a student, the program you're in doesn't always naturally translate into what jobs do you get with this kind of a program and it can be hard to find that kind of information so this is already a pretty good overview of some specialized sectors but also some general corporate areas and where you might find you fit best so you'll notice that that's how this looks but again don't expect to match high everywhere it would kind of be strange if you were good at every single job that was out there naturally fitting with them on the next slide, I'm going to walk you through kind of like how you're supposed to read these results. Because again, I mentioned it before, but it's super important. Our approach, when you get a match, success and satisfaction is what we measure. Okay, we're really looking at, are you going to love it for a long time? Is it going to be passionate for you, for a passion for you in your career? Are you going to be fulfilled and satisfied at work? And are you going to be really good at it? Uh, and that's a mix of your natural preferences, your favorite behaviors, which is one of the two elements we measure, and your career interests. And as Andrew mentioned, these two elements are important. Ideally, both are there for us to really recommend a career for you. We don't want it to just be something that you kind of like or that you're kind of interested in. It has to be something that's really going to ignite a fulfilling career for you. So the box I have here is kind of like a bottom line takeaway, really important. Just because you're naturally good at something doesn't mean you're passionate about it or interested in doing it as a career. That's a big life lesson because often our academic achievements are related to how good we are at something. Do we want to do this forever as a career? That's a passion question. That's a career interest question. And that's where you might not yet have been confronted with the less fun side of doing some of these roles like we confronted you with in the assessment. Similarly, just because something is your passion and your interest doesn't mean it will come naturally to you like it does for others. Just based on your style, yes, you love doing it, but you're, you're not necessarily a natural the way some people are just a natural at it. Can be a, a great analogy might be a basketball, for example. Let's say you love the sport of basketball. You love playing it. You're passionate. You watch all the games, but maybe you, know, you don't necessarily have the, uh, the, the physical height that natural style to be able to dunk, for example. It's very tricky for you. You need a little step up. You need a good running distance to be able to make that basket. Doesn't mean it hasn't happened before, but it's just to be mindful that like that passion is super important. When Success Finder gives you a match level, we're showing you things where you pretty much are guaranteed to have both because of the things that came through and how we compared you to people who already do. Um, I'm also going to show you a little bit how we got to these because I know you might see this and say, okay, well, where is this coming from? I thought I would match. I've been doing this. I've been studying this. I know people who do this. Um, but we actually take a, take a look at people who actually do these jobs and who are rated as being really high performers who have been in the job for a long time, who are very successful. And we kind of study like, what do they have in common? What in their personality comes through? And then afterwards, we compare you to them. So the more similar your style is to them, the higher the match you're gonna get when you look at this actual legend where all your matches are placed. So again, doesn't mean that all of them are gonna be in the highest match, that'd be crazy, 
you might get one, you might get zero, but that doesn't mean you're not a good fit for anything. Some of these are going to be an average, above average match, maybe. And that's already really good. If you find something that's a great direction for you, where you share uh, similar characteristics, not all of them with the people who do this well, you're in really good shape to have a natural propensity as your baseline. All your knowledge, your skills, your experience in these jobs, the training you'll re receive on the job, the coaching you'll receive from a, a great boss from your team, all that just adds on to your natural fit. So you're not stuck with just the natural fit, but it's good to know the baseline and to gravitate towards things that might feel right. I think this is one of the last things I'm gonna say about this on the next slide. Um, keep in mind again, the lower the match, the fewer characteristics you share with people who do this job. So the typical person who does this job and loves this job. Um, it will, might require more effort from you because a lot of these are just not your style. Your preferences are elsewhere. It doesn't mean you don't have strengths, but they're elsewhere. And that's common. It's more common that you're not gonna match with a role that out of the 80 that we showed to you, you wouldn't even have been thinking about anyway, but we're just giving you that portrait for a variety question. The higher you go, the more characteristics you share with high performers. And the higher they are, the less likely it will require effort for you. This job will just feel naturally right. What the requirements are, are kind of how you already do things. And that feels really great. That takes away a lot of the barriers to trying to struggle to do super well. You'll naturally have a great baseline to start with. Now that's rare. That means there's gonna be just a few places that are really that sweet spot. At Success Mind, we call it being on your ex, being in the right role, in the right environment, at the right time. That's something that is a beautiful thing when you get it. And the more you can orient yourself towards things that don't drain your energy, the better it will be for you in the long term. So quickly before I uh, switch over to Andrew, I feel like I've been taking up a little more than my allotted time, but just a quick, out, outro message for from, from me on the next slide is uh, maybe some ways in which you took a look at your results and what you uh, what you thought about it. Could you uh, switch to the next slide? Yep. So maybe you are one of these three people. One, you took a look at your career explorer and you said, no surprises, pretty much confirmed what I already knew, all the things I thought I was gonna do, I scored high on, great, all my strengths, I was aware of them. Uh, you know, I'm studying in tech, all my matches are in tech, uh, I know where my strengths are, I know I'm very rational and uh, reasoning critically and all that stuff. No surprises. So, okay, maybe you're already very self-aware, maybe you're already in line, and this is just a nice confirmation of your career choice, and that can always give you a little bit more confidence. Yes, I'm on the right track. That can feel really good to say, okay, I did this I happened to go into this because I thought I wanted to do, I was passionate about it, but it seems to be the right fit for me. And that can be very reassuring. Maybe you matched with things you really didn't expect you would match on. I'm in marketing and communications, but I scored high on all these like engineering roles. And you say, that's so weird, I'm not in engineering. Um, but oftentimes it's more about your mindset. Yes, you're in marketing and communications, but you think like an engineer. Your brain is a little more logical, a little more methodical than most of the people in marketing and communications. And that shouldn't necessarily be something where you say, should I drop what I'm doing and go into engineering? It's more to say, what can you bring to marketing and communications that could be relevant? Or maybe you do marketing and communications in an engineering company or in a more technology-based company because you're gonna understand the people there. You're gonna understand what they do there. So think of it less as a, an alternative choice and more as something that can be kind of combined into uh, an even more specific direction. And the last context which might happen is I didn't match with the things I wanted or thought I was good at. And again, we did not measure whether or not you were good at them. What we saw is, do you look like the typical person who loves this job, who does this job? If you don't look like them, it doesn't mean you shouldn't do them at all doesn't mean you can't do them at all the thing to keep in mind is you're doing it with an atypical profile it's less common to do it the way you're 
style is. We measured the most common style, the most typical way that people have been able to achieve high performance and success. And maybe you're gonna bring your alternative flavor to it. And that means that you might see more challenges along the way than some of your peers. You might find yourself feeling a bit more different from your peers, you're, you're, you're not really like them, you think differently, you bring a different perspective. But again, with hard work and effort, you can bring that and make that your own. But we want you to be aware that it is less typical. You will find yourself potentially as a bit of a, uh, a more uh, a different profile coming in and shaking things up. Uh, but to keep in mind that there might be some, some challenges there to be aware of. Not a roadblock at all, though. Perfect. Thank you for the wonderful overview on the, the Career Explorer report. Uh, Carolyn, uh, just a quick reminder to all those sitting in that if you have any questions about uh, the things we covered so far or that I'm going to cover in this last section, feel free to send them in to our hosts and we'll do our best to address them after the meeting when we send out the one pager to you guys. Um, we've arrived at, at third and final section three. So hopefully now you have uh, a really good understanding of what you're looking at in your report and how to interpret that. Uh, the information that, that, that came to you in the Career Explorer. Also, they have a bit of an understanding of how SuccessFinder as a tool um, did its work scientifically and from an assessment perspective in the background to populate that report for you guys. Now is kind of the question that if I put myself, if we put ourselves in your shoes, comes supernaturally. It's kind of the so what at the end. So I have all this great information. I'm trying to live my life here. I'm trying to graduate university, move into my early career. What on earth do I do with this stuff? And so what we did is we took our experience, both as young people who've recently made that tra transition from school to work, but also uh, working with students one-on-one -on -one and helping coach them through that transition. And we tried to pull out what I would describe as three areas of information, three I don't want to say universal truths, but three uh, insights into how you can make this information work for you in the best possible way. The first is a level set on the, the, the fact and the idea that transitioning from being a student into the professional world and making a decision about what to do in your early career is a daunting task. Um, it's challenging. Uh, it's full of uncertainty, uh, as, as is many parts of life. And on top of all that difficulty or potential difficulty, it's super important, right? And I think it's, it's important here that we don't shy away from that. Um, but it's true for everybody. What's my next career move? Am I in the right industry? Some of those questions that Carolyn brought up at the, at the end of her slides around wow, am I in the right place? Maybe I'm looking at a Career Explorer report that suggests that I could be elsewhere. These are really, really natural questions. And uncertainty is super common um, when facing so much choice and so many options with where to go in your career. And I want to preface this whole section quickly by saying that being able to develop some skills and tools to deal with uncertainty is invaluable for moving through life. Uh, and we can begin today with like the, the early career portion of that and the decisions that you guys, uh, decisions and questions that you guys might be thinking of as, as you move through the transition into your early career. So how do we deal with that kind of uncertainty? Um, start with self-knowledge. How well can we understand ourselves and how well can we understand what we're looking for? Those are super important. And we hope that Success Finder and the Career Explorer Report has given you guys a really valuable initial set of information and insights that can help you understand your natural profile, right? As Carolyn said, what things are you preferential towards? Uh, what things are you looking for in your career, right? What types of things motivate you and incentivize you uh, in your day-to-day -day work? Uh, what's important to you in your lifestyle? How important is career to you? How important is it to you versus other things in your life? These are really valuable things to, to look at in that report and uh, try to reconcile with, understand why those might be. Um, accept your profile. Um, appreciate the strengths that you have as much as you might get be hard on yourself about the, the scores that were lower. Just accept maybe those aren't your natural preferences and that's okay. 
in addition to that knowledge that the Career Explorer offers, consider some other dimensions of information that can be really, really valuable to young people uh, looking to start their career. The first is what kind of knowledge and experience do you have? From, from my personal experience working with young people, uh, many believe that they don't have a ton of experience. Well, I just graduated, I don't bring a ton to the table. Well, really think, what kind of skills and, and experiences have you developed in your life? Have you had the fortune of traveling lots? Do you have diverse group of friends? Uh, have you interacted with adults a lot and that's impacted your ability to communicate, to be mature uh, in various different settings? Have you done internships? What did you learn from those things? If you learned one thing from every experience you've done so far, what is it, right? And how is that valuable in the workplace? Second, you've probably had people that you've loved working with in your life and you've probably had people that frustrate the heck out of you. Think about what those two different profiles are. Try to find more of those people in a professional setting that motivate and inspire you to go work alongside and work for. Think about the environments as well. Carolyn brought up um, kind of an interesting way to, to look at the world. Do I wanna be in a big company or a small company? Do I wanna be in a startup or a consulting company? How can I find information that helps me understand what each of those different environments require and what's the environment that I would thrive within? That's a valuable question to ask yourself. And the final two kind of work together. Um, it's important to think about your practical objectives. And I speak a little bit from experience here as well in trying to define these things in my own life. Um, work is super important to allow us to achieve the things in life that we want to achieve. If we want to buy a house, if we want to start a family, if we want to travel lots, um, or if we don't, what your practical objectives are in your life may define the type of job that you want to have. If you have a new family at home, maybe you don't want to travel all the time. And if a job requires you to travel all the time, the fit's not going to be great, right? If you want to buy the house, maybe you need to look for jobs that are going to satisfy a certain level of income. The second side of that, is the purposeful or the meaningful objectives. How important is it for your work nine to five to give you really meaningful stuff to do? Things that scratch all the most important values that you have, right? That stand for and represent the things that you want to represent as a person. Can you, do you have to find a job that satisfies that or can you do that outside work? And I have a one story of a good friend of mine, and he is truly a good friend of mine. I did not just take a photo off the internet, but somebody who kind of grappled with this a few years ago. I introduced him as my buddy Gord, and it's true. He's a good friend. And uh, about five years ago, we had an interesting conversation about career. Gord had been working in the insurance industry for five years, and he wasn't quite sure if that was the industry he wanted to continue on with. He was kind of having a a moment of reflection about his early career, as many of you guys might as well um, in the early stages. And <clears throat> I started asking him some questions about why that was. And he said, he did, you know, he didn't really find that the work was that purposeful or meaningful to him. It was work. Uh, he got a paycheck for it, um, but it wasn't that meaningful. He also found the people he worked with, he wasn't the typical profile. And so he had a lot of doubts. Fast forward six months and I get a phone call from Gord and he tells me that he's changed jobs. He's, he's about to work with a new employer. And I expected he would tell me that he was going to go try something completely different. But instead, what he said was that he got a job with another insurance company. So I was kind of curious. I said, based on what we talked about before, how is it possible that you decided to stay? And what Gord essentially explained to me was that he reflected on all these different buckets here. And he said, you know, I've developed five years experience in this industry. I'm worth a lot here. I'm worth more in this industry than somewhere else because of my experience, right? I'm going to be able with my new responsibilities to earn enough money to satisfy practical objectives, to start a family, to buy a house, right? And those things are meaningful to me. So what Gore decided was, hey, I don't need nine to five to be my most meaningful thing. But outside of that, if I have a successful nine to five, which he had, I'll be able to do all those other things that make my life really worthwhile. So I think it's a good example of somebody who looks at those questions within the span of one year in very different ways and who ultimately, because they reflected on that, was very happy with where they netted out. 
he looks pretty happy to me in that photo, at least. I know him well. He's a happy guy. So it's uh, the reflection provides a really interesting opportunity for all of us. Next, identify the different career opportunities uh, that fit your profile. So now that you know so much about yourself, you have to go into the world, look at all the opportunities that exist for you, and try to understand which ones are the ones you want to pursue right now. So again, the Career Explorer provides a really valuable starting point for this. The job family matches that Carolyn introduced you got, well, the report introduced you to, but Carolyn added some, some greater depth and insight into, those provide a really great starting point. And as she mentioned, maybe some of them surprise you. Maybe some of the titles you don't fully understand. But it's a great place to start and say, hey, my profile really matches well with human resources, with engineering, with these other fields. So what I challenge you to do and we challenge you to do now is to take it upon yourself to the extent that you're interested in it, to explore information on your own, to take some responsibility and explore what each of those dimensions look like. There's a world of information out there. Of course, there's campus recruiting, and I, I see it as such a common trait that students wait to see what companies come to their campus, and that's who they're going to apply to. With all due respect, it's your career and it's your life, and if you allowed someone in the careers department who brings these companies in to dictate what career you're going to go into, that would be quite a passive approach. And so I kind of put forth this visual, which helps me understand it and describe it to people, which is kind of like a hierarchy of information. We all have the internet at our footsteps, right? We all have family, friends who may even be willing to introduce us to someone else professionally that we can ask information about different industries in the world, about different things in your career explore profile that made you curious or interested right? Go ask those questions, go search for that information and get a clear understanding of what's out there. In doing so, you're going to understand both what you want to do, but also what you don't want to do. And when you're facing so many possible career paths that you could follow, understanding what you don't want to do is just as valuable in narrowing that scope for you. So to the extent that you feel motivated to do so, we recommend taking all this great information from the report and going out and exploring the world of information to understand where opportunities may exist that are a really great fit for your profile. You might notice that the uncertainty starts to decrease, the confidence that you have starts to increase in that career transition. Um, and both of those things are incredibly, incredibly positive. Thirdly, you know yourself now, that's the yellow box. You've identified some opportunities or at least an area of the career world that you might wanna explore. Now you have to go speak with them, right? You wanna make sure you tell your story in the best way possible for your audience. Take time to understand the companies that you're looking at, to read about what drives them, what are their values, um, what is the job description asking? And instead of just verbally sharing every detail in your story. Be specific and pick just the things that fit with your audience best. The short analogy I like to share on this is on a Monday morning, you had an amazing weekend. You get a phone call from your grandma and you get a phone call from your best friend. They both ask you how your weekend went. You're probably not going to tell them the same thing. You're going to tell your grandma that you read a nice book, you had a nice meal with your parents, you met family, right? You went to bed early. You're probably going to tell your, your best girlfriend or, or, or guy friend that, you know, you maybe went out, right? You went to the bars with your friends. Maybe you met up with your girlfriend or your boyfriend. It's the same weekend, but you got to choose what you want to tell your audience, right? What's going to make the most impact. And so in a career search or professional setting, we always recommend like be honest, be true to yourself, but choose the story that fits your audience best, the job description that you're applying for, the company that you're interested in. And with the Career Explorer Report, you now have a little bit of support identifying what are the things that differentiate you versus everybody else and really try to focus in on those things. I want to leave you with just a couple closing thoughts and then we'll try to quickly address the one question that got submitted. But in closing, career choices 
and many life choices, in my opinion, are, are quite unlimited. And they're quite uncertain, to be honest. There's no darn right answer at all. As my friend Gord would, 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 would support, right? One month he thinks he should do one thing and six months later he makes a very clear argument for why he should do the opposite. And neither path is incorrect. There's a world of knowledge and information out there that can help you address this uncertainty. It may be a little difficult because you have to take the responsibility, you have to put in the time to go search through that information. But if you address the uncertainty, you can feel really confident about your decision. You also reduce the risk that you wake up sometime in the future and look back and say, how did I end up here in a place that I'm not really satisfied or I'm not really successful at, right? And when you're talking to other people around you and, and you, you maybe have some mentors or parents that you speak with, older siblings, people like us who present these presentations that flow smoothly from start to finish, not everybody's make, everyone's story makes sense in hindsight, but everybody's story has just as much uncertainty and all these key moments in life. So if you are feeling any uncertainty about making that transition or feeling like you have to decide on a career path from now until your retirement, like everybody feels those things. So just get yourself as much information to make yourself as confident as you need to be in the moment and check back in with yourself from time to time, knowing that your preferences and even some parts of your personality in a minor way, they're going to evolve as well over time. And to wrap things up, we had one really great question that came in, which is how can we use these results to stand out with future employers? So out of respect to you guys and not repeating ourselves too often here, um, we'll just highlight specifically a couple things, um, or I guess I'll allow ourselves to use this question as like one final summary of some key information. So how can I use the results from this to stand out when you actually go and action this, when you submit an application or when you arrive at an interview? The first, understand yourself and own that. The more proud you are of your profile, the more glowing you're going to be when you share that with people, right? The better you understand your strengths, the better you are going to be able to communicate those strengths to an audience. Second, craft that story, right? Emphasize what differentiates you versus everybody. Don't tell your audience what you think they want to hear. Tell them how you're going to bring something unique to the table. And as Kejo said, this, uh, this report provides a really interesting window into that for you guys. Speak in detail too, right? We give some really great data in the Career Explorer report. Instead of saying that you like to build relationships, which a lot of people probably say, and it's probably true for only some of them. If it's true for you, go into detail. Do you like to build consensus when you work with people? Are you a team player, someone who's cooperative? Do you prefer to lead people? Do you feel like you've had a chance to be inspiring to others before, right? Are you political in how you work? Do you understand your audience's unique motives and you're able to work within that? That's very different than just saying, I like building relationships, right? So use this data and think about your, your own profile in detail, in specifics. Next, engage employers that fit. Instead of the spray and pray kind of strategy where you send out 100 applications in 100 minutes, right? If you do some work to think about who you really want to apply to, what would really create a job that satisfies what you're looking for, it's going to come across to your employer that fit your passion, right? Your ambition. And if you own that, you're going to stand out at least a little bit more than those who applied everywhere and are showing up just because they got the interview for sure. And finally, prepare relevant questions. As Kejo said, you understand more about yourself. It means that you have a great opportunity to ask and interview your employer right back in saying, hey, is this an environment that's going to have these things? Because I know if I have those things, I am primed and ready for success and to feel really satisfied, right? So demonstrate your curiosity with some questions that are going to help you verify that that employer is the best fit for you. And with that, we wrap up on time. We let you guys get on with your day. And uh, I just want to say on behalf of myself, Kejo, thank you very much for um, 
for showing up today. We hope the information has helped you understand that Career Explorer report even better. Um, and we hope we've given you a few really practical ideas for how to take what may seem like a lot of information, synthesize it with everything that Kejo said to you guys today, and then have a few ways to apply that in your, in your life. Kejo, any, Thanks so any much. words? No, that's great. Uh, I really hope this was uh, informative and helpful. And again, uh, like Andrew said, you can always uh, write to us. And uh, if you have some follow-up questions, we're happy to help. And uh, we, hope, uh, we hope you got something out of this. Excellent. Feel free to follow up with any questions to the email the, that was sent to you earlier, which is Andrew at Success Finder. Um, I'm going to stay on the line for a couple of minutes, but Kejo and, and others, uh, we're all free to go. So thank you very much. And, and we look forward to talking with everyone again soon. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome.